Welcome to another episode of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. This is my dynamic co-host, Blue. We're on the Come and Talk to Me Network. We're doing a little something different. We left our beautiful studios in downtown LA. What we're going to try to do is after every playoff and play-in game, we're going to get together, we're going to record an episode, and then we're going to show it the following morning. So we're going to break down the do's and the don'ts, the goods and the bads, of each playoff and play-in game and give you an expert analysis from two guys that played at a high level, one that played at a high level, and the other one won one or two playoff games in his career. So it should be very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. What's up, partner? What's going on, man? You good? What's up, Pop? Uh, this is a great time of year. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's good, man. These playing games already bring some heat, man. Some great performances, some individual and collectively, and it's, it's, it's only going to get better from my perspective. I know that's right, man. I know we're not in the studio, but we got to still keep the lights going. So shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Click the QO card or scan the QO card that's in the bottom left corner. It'll take you right to the site. Play the pick em game. That's our favorite, man. We excited tonight. We got a lot on a lot on the docket, man. We're going to start off. You ready? Yeah, I'm, I've been you born. I was, you don't have, ever have to ask me that again in the history of this show. I don't know, because <laughs> I need your energy to be ready tonight. It was some, it was some, it was some heat tonight, man. It All right, was. first, first we going with the 76ers. They won over the Heat, which means they taking over and going to play the Knicks. We'll get more than that series in a minute. But what did you see from the 76ers that you that you really liked tonight? I really liked first and foremost uh, J- Joel Embiid fighting through. Obviously, not a hundred percent, but fighting through fatigue, fighting through injuries, and uh, inspiring his team. And when it mattered most, making big plays offensively defensively, as a scorer, as a facilitator. It was a beautiful performance by him. And if he's in uniform, that's a dangerous basketball team. He did get help, but he is he is obviously their most valuable piece. Yeah, man. I heard there was some people asking why Batum in the game. Batum was cooking today. Did anybody see that? What you got to say about Nicholas? Uh, I, I witnessed it. You, you're talking about a guy that has tremendous value all throughout the league. Teams in the offseason was trying to get Nicholas Batum because of his, his, his uh, knowledge of the game, uh, the way he defends, his timely shot making, uh, very smart, astute. Um, and you can start him at the three to four. You can even he can defend one through five. We witness big time plays down the stretch defensively. He is a, he's an exceptional basketball player. And really, you can make the case, won the ball game for the Sixers. Timely shots. Big time threes, big time defense, and uh, he talked about making the proper adjustments after the first half or first quarter. He made a conscious effort to try to get the ball to Joel Embiid, and then realize he's got to score. He's got to look to score. Made it was a difference maker with his scoring and his shooting ability, and the Sixers move on because of that. How much is because it's it's not a coincidence that somehow veterans continue year after year to show up big in the playoffs. How much is is that veteran presence on a team? How important is that to to a championship contender or even a playoff contender? It's huge. You got to have veterans or you have to have very smart, well-coached young guys that that were well-coached in college that understand the terms that you use defensively, offensively, the schemes that's used to making adjustments on the fly that you don't have to spend the whole time out to explain different things so they get it quick. You win with those guys. And a guy like Nicholas Batum, not just his experience as a veteran NBA player, but he's played international ball. He's had big, big, big moments. Uh, and, and so th- he's not going to be you know, bothered by uh, uh, a visiting crowd or a missed shot or a bad half or a bad ball game. He's going to make the adjustments, and you win with guys like that. Not only will they inspire themselves to bounce back, They'll see a young guy like Tyrese Maxey or, 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 or Tobias Harris, who's not young but didn't have a particularly great game. And, and th- those guys will put a bug in their ear, inspire them, and let them know we live to see another day and you're going to win a game for us. It just wasn't your night, but continue to do the things that put us in position to win. So those guys are valuable, valuable. We cannot skim over. It was somebody tonight that was given crazy effort, crazy effort from the jump, from the jump ball, this dude was giving effort, and you could tell it was personal. Shout out to Kyle Lowry, man. That dude, you, he got to get, he got to get, 
uh, he got to get. I don't know if he gets the game ball because it was a lot of a lot of people that were involved. But that dude competed from the jump. What do you have to say about about just his championship nature tonight? Well, he's he's a champ, and he's a champ for a reason. He doesn't get the game ball, but he made big plays. And this is where you don't fall in love with analytics because if you looked at the stat sheet alone, it'll tell you, ah, he played okay. He made big time plays, willing to sacrifice his body, dove on the bat. Even that last, almost the last possession. He hit the deck two times on the last play and basically saved the ball from going out of bounds uh, or a turnover by throwing it to uh, Kelly Oubre for the foul and, and, and going to the line to ice the game. Kyle Lowry is toughness, his discipline, his uh, aware and alert, an extension of the coach on the floor. He's a champion for a reason. He did it in Miami early in the year. He did it in Toronto. He's, he did it in Memphis. Wherever he's been, he's been an extension of the coach and a true, true competitor. And you, you talked about it. Made big plays. Defensively, I can make the case the biggest play of the game is, 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 is when he swiped the ball and stripped it from behind, causing the turnover when the Heat was pushing the ball up the court, about to go up four points. Big play by Kyle Lowry, not giving up on a play, getting back into the pitcher. That's how you win playoff games. That's how you win a championship. Yeah. I need, I need going to the other side with the Heat. I need... I need them to hit shots, man. They didn't play that bad tonight, but but they need to hit shots. Even even guys like Jimmy Butler, underrated play play tonight. He played great. He had steals, defended, and brought brought a nature to his team, a grit. But they got to hit shots, man. The role players, even the even the stars, got to hit shots. Having Duncan Robinson back at some point, healthy and whole, he's a shot maker, big time shooter. Tyler Hero just coming back from injury, so he's trying to establish a rhythm. So the guys that they have that are paid to knock down shots are trying to get a rhythm and establish a rhythm coming back. But the thing that bothered me is they had the game iced away. They were blowing the Sixers out. The crowd was booing. The hometown fans were booing the Sixers. The pressure was on them. Miami Heat, you can't take possessions for granted. You have to value possessions and value the basketball and make sure you continue to do the things to put you in position to have a big lead. They started to crumble. They started to be careless. They started to take... One reckless shot leads to two reckless shots. One turnover leads to two turnovers. All of a sudden, uh, a 15-point game becomes an eight-point game, and you've allowed them to get back into the picture. And the worst thing possible is now you have to win the basketball game for the second time instead of putting them away. And that costs the Miami Heat the, 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 the W and forces them to now be in a must-win situation. Pops, X was buzzing tonight. They was talking. They was talking about a certain sweep that happened between the Knicks and the 76ers in, in the year. I don't even know what year it was, but I need you to give me the details. And what, what what's, what's that about, man? Man, time flies, man. I, I looked at it. Somebody sent it to me, and it, 35 years ago was the last time that the Sixers and the Knicks met in the playoff series. My New York Knicks team that I was a part of, Charles Barkley. And all those 76 teams, I mean, players was a part of, and we actually swept them. I remember great times. I remember they wanted us because during the regular season, we may, have played them, we may have played them five times during the regular season. They beat us four. They beat us pretty handily, and they had our number. So they felt comfortable coming into the playoff series, and we swept them. And uh, fun time. We it was leaving the, off of the court. There was a broom just just happened to be calling my name, and. <laughs> <laughs> about four or five of us grabbed the broom and swept it across the spectrum floor. Great memories, great times, and uh, I really anticipate this being an outstanding series. Man, I want to know who you got, man. The city needs to know. Is the Knicks going to beat the 76ers? I'm going to say the Knicks will win. I'm going to say the concern I have with the 76ers is the same concern I had against the Miami Heat a healthy Joel Embiid, but more so against the Knicks. Because Jalen Brunson, if I'm coaching the New York Knicks, it's high screen and roll, 1-5. I'm putting Joel Embiid in every pick and roll situation possible, and I'm attacking him. Against the Miami Heat, he was in the drop, which allows the point guard to get the airspace and become comfortable. If you do that against Jalen Brunson, this just in. That's suicide. You, it's a recipe for disaster. He will have his way and win the battle on his terms. A master at creating contact, a master at getting to his spots and making you pay the price. They have to make the adjustment defensively for them to stand a chance against this Nick team.
Yeah, they were struggling with Tyler Hero tonight. They gonna have a they gonna have a, a lot on their plate come what what day is that? I don't even know I don't even know, but there's they're gonna have a lot on their plate. Yeah, it's gonna it's 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 gonna be an exciting series. And the Knicks will have their hands full also because you got guys like Tobias Harris who's from the New York area, played in played in uh Dix Hills in high school. You you got Kelly Oubre, who actually played very well the last time he was in Madison Square Garden against the Knicks. You got Kyle Lowry. You got, you got guys that have a chip on their shoulder. Tyrese Maxey, he's going to have a mentality like, I got something to prove. I'm better than Jalen Brunson. So he's going to play with an edge. So it'll be an exciting series. And uh, I think ultimately what you don't want to do if you're the Knicks, you don't want to let Joel Embiid live on the foul line. You want to defend him without fouling because he's going to get his. Healthy or not, he's going to get his. You look today, didn't didn't play particularly well, still wound up with, you know, double-double and, 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 and impact of the game. So he's going to be a difference maker. What you don't want to allow him to do is score the basketball from the field and also get to the free throw line because then all of a sudden they're, they're, they're having their way offensively. And what's, what's it like playing in the, in the garden in the playoffs, man? What's, what's that experience like? No place better. No place better. You think about it. You, Jalen Brunson, who's had – as good a year as I can remember a God having in, in, in blue and orange. And, and, and he, he was in tears at the, at the last game, you know, the last game of the season. The crowd ch- chanting his name. Just the emotions when you realize this is the place that the Knicks won two championships. This is the place where uh, Willis Reed and Walt Frazier and Patrick Ewing, this is the place where Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier, this is the place where Ali and Frazier for it. You, you all of a sudden realize this is a special place that nowhere else in the country has. And now you are him <laughs> when the lights get brightest. So you embrace it, you realize it, and you want to extend the season. It's not enough to beat the Philadelphia 76ers. We got bigger and bigger plans. So now handle your business and continue to move on. Game two from Wednesday night, man. We had the Bulls. Send the Hawks packing, man. They out of here. They going to Cancun. They gone. How you feel about that game? What you what you think, man? Where they going? Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta go, man. Get their fishing bags. Get they get the family in the in the family van. They going everywhere. It's it's time for summer vacation. Yeah, you asked me about the game on our last episode, and I picked the Chicago Bulls. And the reason why I picked the Chicago Bulls. And I felt so good about them is because of their habits. Are they talent for talent better than the Atlanta Hawks? Probably not. But their habits. The Hawks have been inconsistent all season long. To me, they've been the most disappointing team in the league this year. Uh, they didn't. You think about it. They play against in a must-win situation. You give a limited Chicago Bulls team all they want offensively, and they push the basketball off a of maids or misses. They, they push the basketball and wind up with high percentage layups or wide open shots time and time again. I don't see anybody frustrated. I don't see anybody upset. I don't see anybody discouraged. We just take the basketball out. We run our offense. We try to get our baskets and we move on. It, it's just been a disappointing season for the Atlanta Hawks. Big time win for the Chicago Bulls, especially when you're talking about DeMar DeRozan, the guy who led the league in minutes played, underappreciated, future Hall of Famer, goes against everything the analytics stands for because of his ability to take over the game in the mid-range area. Master at the mid-range, gets to his spots, elevates, puts so much pressure on you. Big time play by him, a guy that was doubted early on in his career, uh, Kobe, Kobe White, just an incredible performance that he put on, timely shots, gaining more and more confidence in the pick and roll, in his shot making, not looking over at his, his coach and Billy Donovan to see what we should run but running his basketball team. And the thing I was most impressed with, he was Mike during the telecast. You can hear him talk to the guys, encourage guys, inspire guys, correct guys, the right tone, tenor, and texture in how to lead a basketball team. It was a beautiful night for the Bulls, DeMar DeRozan, and for Kobe White. Yeah, man. DeMar played played great, solid. Caruso played solid. Even Drummond coming in. That that storyline of Andre Drummond is every time I see him come out and compete like he does – it's impressive, um, just the the ebbs and flows of his career. But I gotta give it up, man. It's 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 Cantu and Shea Moisture all over the floor. Kobe White was going crazy. That boy <laughs> was cooking, man. What? 
Did you see like, the euros? Did you see the euros? The in that and out. It took. I thought I was watching Palomalu with with the hair flowing everywhere. That was crazy. <laughs> that boy is tough, man. I ain't, I, I ain't know he was he was in his bag like that for the for the player, man. I didn't think he was coming like that. It just shows you the, the biggest thing to me coming into the league years ago is the same thing that's the biggest thing today: confidence. And now all of a sudden, Kobe White is on the floor like he's a world beater. If he took a lie detector test, he'd pass it if you asked him who's better, him or Trey Young. Mm -hmm. He believed last night he was the best guard on the floor. And when you believe that and act on it, you're not worried about making mistakes. He was skating, dancing, pulling up. He wanted his numbers. He set the tone for his team and kept his foot on the gas pedal all night long. That dude was living life out there. That dude... He had them boys in the torture rack. I'm sorry. And I love I love the Hawks. I love both of those guards, but he had them boys. That was that was that was bad tonight. That was bad. The Hawks have, have to learn that you you have to have the mentality to impact the game defensively. We know you can impact the game offensively. That's not the issue. You got two guys that can get theirs any given night in that backcourt. There's no question about it. But how about making things uncomfortable for DeMar DeRozan? How about somebody saying, let me put a stop to Kobe White in the way he's having? The mentality that they should have is the mentality that Andre Drummond had, which you touched on. Here's a guy, I saw him speak to kids a couple of months ago, a year ago, talking about he was a max player, and now all of a sudden he's playing for the league minimum. He said the mentality did that, but he's embracing it now. He learned from it, he's coming off the bench, and he's impacting the game. You see him sprint the floor, block shots, rim run, dunk. At the, you know, it's just a different mentality, and it's a winning mentality. This guy is still a starting center in this league. He's one of the all-time great rebounders in the history of this league. Documented. It's not something I heard. It's something I know. Documented one of the all-time great rebounders in the league. And it's inspiring to see him embrace the role and, and accept the challenges and then respond and react. What's the, what's the outlook for the offseason for Atlanta? What's their plan? What, how do they attack? They got to make some changes. You, you got to make a decision. Can these two guards play together? I'm not there every day, so I, I don't have an answer for that. But you spend time around them. You watch them every single day in games, in practice, on the bus, on the plane, working out, how committed they are. Not, not they say they want to win, but do they mean it by their actions? And you have to make a decision. Can we do it with these two guys? And if we can't, we have to make a decision and cut, cut loose with one of them and get the best possible package that we can for one of them and move forward. They got to find a way to develop the right habits. On top of who's in uniform, I don't like their habits. I don't like the way they compete on a nightly basis. I don't, I don't, I, I it's a losing mentality and you could tell it, it was just a matter of time when the season was going to end. This is not a 10th seed. Are you kidding me? The Atlanta Hawks, that was the darlings of the playoffs a couple of years ago, all of a sudden there's a 10th seed in a playing situation and don't make the playoffs. That's unacceptable. And it's unacceptable from an ownership standpoint, management standpoint, coaching standpoint and player standpoint. And if it's not, then find somewhere else to play. Yeah, them dudes got too much talent to be losing and losing in this way. They need to be competing in this time. It's been a long time coming for the Hawks. It's, it's been a while, man. It's been a while. It's time. You get so many guys. I, I played it. I coached it. I lived it. I covered it. You get so many guys that say all the right things. You put a microphone in their face, ask them questions. Yeah, it's disappointing. They don't. There's, there's some guys that just don't care. And those are the guys that you got you to gotta depart from because they will, they will be a cancer in your locker room and you'll find yourself on vacation. I'm not talking about anybody specifically because I'm not around them, but their, their, their body of work for 82 games and now 83 games tells me they had the wrong habits. And I'm not just talking about, I'm not just talking about guys in uniform. I'm talking about across the board because that's how I judge it, across the board. Your habits start with your head coach and the organization and they fell short of that. Let's keep going now that we broke some games down. Everybody keeps asking in the comments for you to put your Coach Mark hat on. They want to see Coach Jackson. They want to know what you're thinking and what your thought process is. So I got a few questions for you. We're going to run them down. And I just want to know what you, what you would do in, in a, a, a coaching seat. You know? Absolutely. Here we go. Coach Mark, what's your pregame message to the Bulls prior to their elimination playing game versus the Heat? First of all, I keep my coach's hat on. I keep all my hats on at the same time. So it's <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, you got a big old head. You got a big head. <laughs> <laughs> There's respect for your pops, man. <laughs> but, I, but I'll tell you this. What's the message? The message, we're shorthanded. Don't blame me. Blame the league. 
We didn't pick the Miami Heat. We didn't pick to go to Miami. It ain't our fault. They got to see us. We're shorthanded, but we're a no-excuse basketball team. The mentality is put the same work, energy, and effort that we put in into playing against the Atlanta Hawks. We're going to respond the same exact way. We're not celebrating. We had 20,000 people in Chicago getting crazy and excited about what we accomplished. Guess what, fellas? We haven't accomplished nothing. Let's go handle business in Miami. Let's move forward to the playoffs. And then we'll begin to celebrate by advancing, advancing, and advancing, and ultimately maxing out by winning the crown. But let's not settle for beating the Atlanta Hawks. We didn't do anything. Oh, that felt good. That was a good one. All right, all right, all right. I like that. You, I like you ready to play? Yeah, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play. I'm interested, though. Because we got to see Coach Jackson in the heat. Well, well guess what? You got me sparked now. We're not, we not going to South Beach. We're not going to Prime 112. We're not hanging with DJ Khaled. It's going to be another one. Not another uh-huh. one, Khaled. Another win. Another win and advance. That's the mentality that we have to have. You got me sparked <laughs> now. Is, that, is, that, is this still your, your speech for the Bulls? Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, now, now I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. We're going to, we, we, we running out the, we're running out the locker room to that one. Okay, that, that got good. Me. But we need to switch now. I need to know what's your, what's your speech to the heat before the game? That across the room is a well-coached, hardworking, competitive basketball team. Don't shortchange them because if we do, we'll find ourselves on vacation. Guess what? I made reservations in Boston. I expect to be playing the Boston Celtics. I expect to have you with me. Let's handle our business. Let's not have any mishaps. Let's take care of business individually and collectively. You got your matchup. I got mine. I got Billy Donovan. Now y'all take care of your matchup and let's win and get out of here. Mm, mm, that's tough. All right. I like that one too. That's tough. But I think, I think off of those two, if I had to pick off of those two, I'm, I'm going out. With, I'm going with the Bulls then. Because you, you hyped me up with the Bulls. I was yeah, ready. I went hip hop on you. I talked about I DJ know, I was Khaled and all that. I was yeah. ready. Yeah, of, I, that's, course, of course. That's my choice now. So I'm going with the Bulls. Who's your choice for the game? Who's winning? My choice for the game is going to be the Miami Heat. The reason why is because they're playing at home. They have history. They have championship DNA. They got an outstanding coach. Both teams are well coached. But uh, I think they're a deeper, healthier basketball team right now. But I wouldn't be shocked if Chicago win. But since you asked me a pick, I'm not going to be on the fence. Uh, I, I'm going to pick the Miami Heat uh, to win. <laughs> Are either of these teams able to compete with the Celtics? Absolutely. I'm not going to pick either one of them to beat the Celtics in a series, but either team, especially the Miami Heat, because they got size, they got depth, they got shooting, they, they, they got veteran uh, leadership. So I, I would pick Miami as a better matchup to upset the Boston Celtics as opposed to Chicago. Both teams, though, have the talent and the wherewithal to make it an interesting series. Staying in the East, what is what is Coach Mark working on in practice if you're the Knicks preparing for the 76ers? One thing we're going to work on without a doubt is double teaming Joel Embiid. We're not going to start the game double teaming him, but we're going to be ready at a certain time during the course of the game to double team Joel Embiid, get the ball out of his hands, and then how are we going to fire out of the double team? the responsibilities that we have from the double man, the rotation man, and everybody else. Who's helping the helper? We're going to go over those things and be in a position where we understand. Then we're not going to just do that to Joel and B. There will come a point in time with our activity, our competitive spirit, and our length, we're going to disrupt Tyrese Maxey in pick and roll situations. We're going to try to trap him. We're going to try to make him feel uncomfortable. Because what we don't want to do is have that two-headed monster get it going, and then we, we got to deal with it. How are you handling... Uh, the 76ers having to injure Joel Embiid and just riling up this supporting cast. What's your game plan if you were if you were coaching them? Guess what, fellas? I'm hurt. I'm on IR. I'm not 100. percent That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Give me what you got, and we'll live with the results. Max out. Do not come back into this locker room with anything left in your tank. I want to see the light, bright orange or bright red, whatever type of car you have. I want to see it on empty. Don't come into this locker room with your head held down with something left in the tank. Let's take care of business and move on to game two. One game at a time. We're not looking to win four. We're looking to win one and move forward. That's the mentality. But I'm not 100%, and I'm not making any excuses. Hey, this is impressive. This is low-key like, you know when you see like the ciphers and, the, and, the, and you throw out like a, a word and the, and the rapper does like a bar with the word? 
you low key like that with with, with your with your sermons and your coaching and your and your moments. Like I feel like if I just said like Christmas, you could give me something that would make my heart <laughs> like swell up for a minute and feel <laughs> feel like I'm ready to play Game Seven. I got to give you your flowers. You 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 top of the line with that. Well, I appreciate it. I was that kid sitting in the corner, being a coach, a player, a motivator, announcer. I was all of those things. So Shakespeare said there's sermons in stone. So everything that you experience in life is, is, a, is a story behind it to tell and be inspiring. So I don't stumble onto these things. I document them and I have them locked and loaded at all times. I, I, believe me, when you ask me for a speech, I got about five. I just happened to pick one. So I'm fortunate enough to be in that position. And experience is a great teacher. So it's a couple of NBA topics to get to. We're going to touch on a few. You ready? Absolutely. All right. So first off, the Warriors had their exit interviews, and they gave Klay Thompson a vote of confidence. What's your, what's your opinion on that, and how do you feel um, just looking at, on the outlook of Klay's, Klay's career moving forward? I don't think it's breaking news because I think if, if you didn't want Klay back, you would still give him a vote of confidence. It's the way to go out for what he's been able to accomplish in uniform on an historic run. Klay Thompson is, is a big-time basketball player still. I really believe he's a legit starting two-guard that can be impactful on a championship team. I think he has plenty left in the tank. Had a bad night in the playing game. Admit that and move forward. I hope to see Klay Thompson healthy and whole and still knocking down shots for a long time to come. Good job giving a vote of confidence, but at the end of the day, Klay Thompson has to make a business decision that's best for him and his family. Yeah, man. I, 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 it hurt me seeing that game, watching Klay struggle like that, especially he's one of my favorite players. So to see him go out like that, I want to see him uh, have the peaks that he's had in his career once again. And I feel like he will. It's not uh, too over the hill or too done. And his greatness and his grit will, um, I believe, come through and shine eventually. Oh, I know if I'm a team, I'm going after Klay Thompson. If I got room to to spend money, I'm going after Klay Thompson because he's legit, loves to play basketball, and is an underrated all-time great competitor. Yeah. They, and the Warriors got to come and offer him some money just on the back end. Like, you you put in all this time, you you held us down. They, they should come through and, and, and look out for him. Sounds good. What's <laughs> no, no, no. No, I, I agree, but you can get into trouble thinking that. I'm a Yankee fan, and yeah. I think the Yankees did that trying to reward Derek Jeter for what he did. You have to use wisdom in business, making business decisions. I think Clay Thompson still has plenty in the tank, so it's the right thing. But you don't want to say I owe anybody anything. I feel that we're gonna we have one more topic, but I feel like it's appropriate that before we go to this topic, I shout out Underdog Fantasy. Click the QR code in the corner. Go to the website. Play the pick em game. That's one of our favorites. Shout out Underdog Fantasy. I say that because it's a little cheater out here that's been cheating. Jonte Porter, what you been doing, man? Some money on the games, losing on purpose. How do you feel about what Jonte Porter did, Pops? I told you it was going to be a lifetime ban coming, and he deserves it. He's wilding. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. I, my thoughts and prayers to him and his family made a bad decision and forced the commissioner's hands to make the ultimate decision, which gives him a lifetime ban. You have to make that decision, even though I was hoping that it wasn't going to be a lifetime ban. But from Commissioner Adam Silver's standpoint, he's got to send a message because it's in vogue to, to gamble on sports. And the gamble is so easy. You pick up your phone, you make a bet. He has to send a message to anybody else that thinks about making a bet or messing around with the integrity of the game he had to nip it in the bud, so it's the right decision. I hope that one day uh, Porter gets back uh, in the league at some point after rehabilitation and acknowledging the wrong that he did. That is the greatest answer I've ever heard. Come on, can we have a real conversation? The dude was betting on the under for his for five points. What are we I doing? Can't, I, can't, I can't. I can't co-sign it. And they found it. that he was missing shots on purpose. Like we, no, no, no. This is not a tough situation. He put himself in a tough situation. No, the dude he did. Was walling. He did. He he absolutely did. You know, even betting the under and then leaving the game early. So he he made a bad decision. He he made a bad decision that's going to impact his life for a long time to come. I just want to try to encourage him rather than throw rocks at him. He's right. wrong. I'm not co-signing it. But I hope that he bounces back and gets his life together and understand 
the bad decision, the poor decision that he makes. And I hope somebody else out there is watching so that they think twice before they make that same mistake. Jonathan, hit up Underdog Fantasy. They'll hit you with an account, get you right, set up, get you all on point. You're fighting dirty, man. <laughs> That's a wrap for the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. This is my guy, Blue. Does a dynamic job. We're on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Thank you for the love and support. Remember, Dirk Nowitzki lost in 2007. The number one seed, the MVP, lost in the first round of the playoffs as a one seed to the eighth-seeded Golden State Warriors. He yelled, he screamed, he punched a hole in the Warriors' locker room. He said, document it. If I had not lost in 2007, I would not have won a championship in 2011. Old man said trials and tribulations transportation for where you're going. I don't know what you're going through. You've suffered a major loss. You screamed, yelled, and maybe even punched. Hold on. Victory is on its way. Blessings.